Hello, welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host, Mike Santa. And today we're going to look at this video by uh, Fuego Santa. Well, I don't know. I'm going to look at this, uh, look at a, a quick clip from this video by Fuego Savvy and uh, Rick Friendly Hood and Jack Smack were on there on his live stream the other day. And I came on, I came in the chat and they started trying to talk smack about me. They're just complete hypocrites, and I'm going to show it right here. So let's go. David Benjamin drives a Tesla. She's probably just joking around because we make fun of Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been just a final nail in the coffin. Total false profit. Fake. All right, this guy. If you guys get Toronto out of here, no, I don't want to look at him out of here. He's, he's going to get exposed pretty soon, too. I already got some material ready for him. Yeah, it's a waste of time, honestly. Nobody's taking him seriously. He's just attacking everybody. He's attacking the true. The stupid retard is what he is. Fool. Yeah, I don't even think he's safe, but that's another issue. But, you know what? Real recognize real. Like, oh, to uh, get Toronto uh, out of here. Yeah. She's probably just joking around because we make fun of Teslas. <laughs> 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 That that would have been just a final nail in the coffin. Total false profit, fake. All right, this guy. Hey, can you guys get Toronto out of here? I don't, yeah, don't want to look at his crap. Out of here. So he's going to be exposed just... pretty soon. Too. Get well, Toronto out of here. Yeah, I don't, yeah, don't want to look at his crap. Uh, because you can't see it if I. Oh man, it's hard to see it if I. If I <laughs> yeah. uh, hit. That that would have been just a final nail in the coffin. Total false profit, fake. All right, this guy. Hey, needs can you guys to... get Toronto? I said, Jack Smack is a literal heretic who says if a person does not believe in Ostas, they are unsaved, okay? So that's backloading, clearly, all right? Anyone who tries to say that just because you don't believe in Ostas now, that that means you're unsaved, that's backloading, okay? Clearly, all right? So let's hear what they say. I, I informed them of this. I've told them of this in the past. I have uh, told Jack Smack about this because I made a video about it and I tagged him on it. He knows very well that I revealed this about him. He never took the video down. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Out of here. I don't, yeah, don't want to yeah, look at his crap. All right, this guy. Hey, can you guys get Toronto out of here? I don't, don't want to look at his crap. So he's going to be exposed pretty soon, too. I already got some material ready for him. Oh, uh, you're going to expose me? I already exposed you, Jack. You are a literal heretic backloading. Okay, I'm going to show it here again, but I've already exposed you. And these guys are trying to expose David Benjamin. I'm the first one to expose David Benjamin, okay? I'm the first one. And even, even like, Fuego says, oh, I never heard, in this stream, right, he goes, oh, I never heard David Benjamin. I never listened to him before. But meanwhile, he told me he watched my whole video on him. And you know how they make this joke? They always make this joke about, like, the fatted calf. How David Benjamin says, the, says about the fatted calf. That was me. I was the one that pointed that out. And Fuego was telling me how he how he cracked up when he heard me say that. And they always make that joke now. They just stole my joke. But whatever. You can steal my joke. I'm just saying you're 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 rolling with the with Jack Smack. He's a literal heretic. Okay? So that makes you guys heretics. If you guys aren't gonna call him out for his heresy. That means you're heretics too, okay? Because don't you're not supposed to even wish these people God's speed, because he that wishes him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. John, First John or Second John. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Honestly, nobody's taking him seriously. He's just attacking everybody. He's attacking the true the stupid retard is what he is. YouTube. Fool. And yeah, I don't even think he's saved. But... He's a stupid retard. He's. I don't even think he's saved. But the, but hear what hear what um Fuego said right he's attacking the real on uh, he says I'm the, I'm attacking the real ones but I'm just literally showing how they're backloading that's all I'm doing I'm literally showing in their videos how they're backloading Saint ABS and now this guy Jack Smack I showed it clearly and I'm gonna show it here again but that's another issue but you know what real recognize real like you know it's just Real, real recognized real. Is that in the Bible, uh, Fuego? Or is that from your stupid gangster culture that you that you think is you're cool, you think you're a gangster or whatever? Real recognized real, man. Well, if you were real, Fuego, and uh, your friendly hood, if you guys were real, 
you would recognize that Jack Smack is a heretic. But because you're not real, you can't recognize it. Okay? So the real recognized real thing goes both ways. You can say that about me. Oh, I don't recognize you guys, so therefore I'm not real. Well, maybe it's maybe you're not real. That's why you don't recognize. All right? Clown. Don't recognize real. That's it. He doesn't like AVS. He doesn't like me. He doesn't like Yeah, I don't like AVS because he's a backlog. Actually, I like him. I like personally, I like the guy. Okay? I mean, I don't like his videos, but I like him as a person. I like you as a person. I even like your friendly hood as a person. I don't like Zach Smack because he's an idiot. He just goes off. He just goes off on anyone who, who tries to criticize him. Just like like you guys are saying about David Benjamin, anyone who criticizes him, he shuts them down. He doesn't listen. Well, I've pointed out that Jack Smack's backloading, and he just goes, oh, no, oh, he's a retard. Don't listen to him. Well, that's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. So you guys are hypocrites. You're doing the exact thing that you're saying David Benjamin does. Okay? Idiot. Like you. So I don't know what he thinks about you, Hood, but. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure he'll think something about me after this. If I see somebody attacking the real people on YouTube, that's how you know they're fake. So, yeah. Um, so I'm not attacking the real people. I'm attacking you guys because you're rolling with these heretics. Okay, you're rolling with literal heretics, and you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're heretics. Who cares? So, like, I, I went to uh, your friendly hoods. Um, uh, Discord and, and talk to him about this stuff, and he's like trying to like apologize for Jack Smack. Like, look what I said. I go, I don't know if you can see this. I go, uh, is that because you? Because he goes, look, he goes, I don't like the Free Grace OSAS label. That's what he said here, right? And I go, is that because you support backloading, which Free Grace is considered heresy? He goes, no, backloading is a heresy. I made a post about backloading. If true faith is needed for salvation, and true faith requires works, or else it is not true faith, then you believe in works salvation. Yeah, wow, your brilliant logic. Oh, wow, dude, you solved the whole thing, man. Why aren't you against Jack Smack's blatant backloading such a great video about it called non OSS means not safe? And 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 so this guy. Oh, anyway, this guy, the secret doctrine comes in. This guy is another. I don't even know too much about him. He's not suspicious. If you believe you can lose salvation, you believe you must maintain three works. Yeah, obviously, idiots. But if you believe, that if you believe when you first get saved, or when you first like hear about the gospel, if you believe that, that you know. That if you if you lose that if you leave the faith you're not really saved. If you believe that when you first get saved, right, or when you first hear about the gospel, then you won't be saved. You won't get eternal life because you think that you can lose it, okay? Or you think that you have to do something. You have to not leave the faith or something, which is a work. Okay, that's a work clearly. All right. So Jack Smack says, if a person says they are free grace and then turns around and becomes non-free grace, then that person was never saved. And so this guy's like, this guy's like apologizing for him. He's like, uh, uh, I don't know. He doesn't back. So Jack Smack doesn't. He says Jack Smack doesn't backload. Okay. And then I was, I thought he said sniffing. It was Jack Smack. And then I go, look at the video I posted about Jack Smack. He's obviously backloading. And then he goes, I don't see issue. I don't see the issue with what he's saying. This is about a practical application for how to deal with people who reject OSAS. He isn't saying that if you reject OSAS in the future, you were never safe. Yeah, he is saying that. I'm going to show it right now. So this guy can't even listen to a video by this guy Jack Smack and understand the English language what he's saying. Right? That's what this this guy like watch he claims he watched the video and he can't understand what this guy's saying. 
And he goes, oh, so it's about how you should treat people who reject those fasts. He says you treat them as unsaved. Da, 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 da. Well, no, that's not what he said, idiot. Look what he says. Context. He completely oh, butchered sorry, the meat. wrong video. Um, oh, it's this one. Okay. Okay, this sermon is entitled, Non-O-Sass Means Not Saved. I'd like to open okay, up... so I'm not going to go through this whole video, but the point is, this guy's trying to say that if you're, if you're like, if you get saved uh, free grace style, and then you turn around and say that you're, that you're, that you, oh, this is here, Mom. Sleep of death. Now, there are people out there that claim to be free grace who think that these hardcore, adamant, obdurate, OSAS rejectors might actually be saved because they claim they used to believe in eternal security and free grace. See, so he's saying that if a person claims that they used to believe in free grace, but now they're saying that they're not free grace anymore, that those people are not saved, okay? Adamant. Yeah obdurate OSAS rejectors might actually be saved because they claim they used to believe in eternal security and free grace when this is nothing but wishful thinking predicated on nothing but unbiblical man-made logic and the reason why is because when a person opposes the clear gospel and the doctrine of eternal security it is a telltale sign that they do not have biblical salvation because See, see what he's saying? If a person denies free grace or whatever, then that's a telltale sign that they do not have salvation. So he's saying that, like, if a person watches this video by Jack Smack, right, they're going to think that in order, if they're truly saved, they will never leave the faith. Okay? That's backloading. That's putting works, the work of not leaving the faith putting it into the salvation message. You can never leave the faith. If you leave the faith, you're not really saved. If somebody thinks that, they will not be saved. Okay? That's why this is important. That's why we have to make sure we don't save this stuff. Because when it comes to the Bible, there's only one type of salvation offered to mankind, and it is an eternal salvation. In Hebrews chapter 9, the Bible says that Jesus obtained eternal redemption for us. John 3.15 reads that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And whenever a person starts talking about a salvation that can be lost, they're describing a temporary salvation, one that does not biblically exist. And I believe the only reason these people are doing this is because they're not saved at all. They claim, I don't believe in eternal security, or I don't believe in once saved, always saved, or I'm non-OSAS. That's just code for I'm not saved. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we have right, an example right, anyway. of people... Oh, yeah, yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I, I, did all, I covered all this in a video about this, but I just want to show it to you again. ...speaking what they believe, and they believe what they have. Jesus said, he that believes on me has everlasting life. It's natural to talk about everlasting life if that's what you have. It reads in verse 13 of chapter 4, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Now, notice it says that we have the same spirit of faith. That means that all saved people believe the same way. It doesn't say... See what he says? See what he just said? He just said, all saved people believe the same way. So he's saying that if you're saved, you're, you're going to believe the same way. If you don't believe the same way, you're not saved. That's backloading. Clearly, you absolute clowns. How dare you? How dare you try to insult me when I'm, when I'm just pointing out that this person is a heretic. He's a literal heretic. This is literal heresy, okay? You guys are just rolling with him. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. What? I don't, I don't personally believe that Jack Smack was committing heresy. Say we have multiple spirits of faith or different spirits of faith. We have the same spirit of faith. And if you just jump back a few verses and even skip ahead, you'll see that they're talking about the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 14 reads, Knowing that he which raised up 
the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. If you back up, it's talking about the dying of the Lord Jesus in verse 10. And therefore, what we get from this is that when people believe the true gospel, they will speak about it. Conversely, when people... Oh, you see that? You see that? When people believe the true gospel, they will speak about it. What if I don't speak about it, Jack? Does that mean I'm not saved? If I, if I believe the true gospel, but I never speak about it. <laughs> like or whatever like i guess i didn't believe it is that what you're trying to say so he's just, he just said that's again that's backloading all right he said he just said that if a person believes the true gospel they will speak about when it. people believe the true gospel they will speak about it that is backloading okay there's no reason to believe that just because someone believes the truth that they're gonna speak about it there's no reason to believe that if you say that that's backloading if you tell people that and they think they believe you they will not be saved, okay? Conversely, when people believe a false gospel, that's what they're going to be speaking about. And that's why people believe you can lose your salvation. The truth of the matter is that they don't have a salvation to lose. And the Bible also... They don't have a salvation to lose. We're just saying somebody could get saved, believe the truth, get saved, and then get confused and believe this stuff. That's perfectly possible. There's no reason to believe that that's not possible. And if you try to say that it's not possible, you're backloading. That's a false gospel. You're a wicked heretic. And Jack Smack is that person. He's a wicked heretic. Okay? It talks about the witness that God gives people who believe the truth. Turn over to 1 John chapter 5. Yeah, it, now he's going to try to say, for, anyway, listen to what he says. This guy's an idiot. Reads in verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. So anyone who is saved, they receive the witness of God. It tells us what the witness is in verse 11, and the word witness is simply a synonym for testimony. Verse yeah, it's not, it's not the testimony into your heart. It's testimony to, to God. He's testifying to God. He's the witness to God that you are one of his sons, that you're one of his children. That's what he does. That's the witness. The witness in yourself, that's the witness to God. It's not a witness to you. You don't know You don't know what the Holy Spirit is witnessing to you. You don't hear him. Witness is in verse 11, and the word witness is simply a synonym for testimony. Verse 10 reads, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. So yeah, they made him a liar by believing not the record that they have eternal life. He's talking to people that have eternal life. You can see that in, in verse 13. He's talking to people that have eternal life, but he's saying, if you try to deny that you have eternal life, then you make God a liar. That's what he's saying to them. Okay, He's not trying to say that anybody who says that they don't have eternal life is unsaved or whatever. That's so dumb. Not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. So anyone who actually believes on Jesus Christ for salvation, they have the witness inside of them. Verse 11 reads, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. People who are saved understand that they have eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Yeah, they, they understand that when they first get saved. They can easily forget that or get confused out of that. That's why John has to remind them. That's why he says in verse 13, I'm writing to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. He's, he's reminding them that they have eternal life, he, he, or he wants to make sure they know, make sure you understand that you have eternal life. He's not saying to them, because, because the person who has eternal life can stop believing that. They can stop believing that. That doesn't mean that they don't have it. People who are saved understand that they have eternal life. And this life is in his son, meaning that it's not based on anything a person does. It's based on what Jesus did 2,000 years ago at the cross. He died, was buried, and rose again. It's based on that and that alone. And when people start spewing out all this garbage, all this heretical, blasphemous, satanic trash about losing salvation that proves emphatically that they don't have the witness in them they have so you see what he just said if somebody is preaching this satanic garbage of uh, losing salvation that proves emphatically he said it proves it emphatically 
if they do not have the witness in themselves. That means they're unsaved. That's what he's saying. If you preach, like, works, salvation, or whatever, that means you're unsaved. That's what he's saying. That's clearly backloading, okay? If you don't understand that, it's because you're idiots. You should not teach the Bible. You should stop. Delete your channel, you clowns. Listen, I don't know why you guys don't understand it. If somebody hears this, if somebody believes this, what he just said, this idiot, Jack Smack, right? If somebody believes that, they will not be saved. Do you understand, you absolute idiots? Fuego and uh, and friendly hood. Wow, dude. How do you guys not understand this? How do you understand this? Anyway, whatever, man. You know, I, I, told, I told friendly hood I wasn't going to disrespect them. But now, you know what? They were disrespecting me on the video. And I don't even care. I don't respect them. I, I lost all respect for them. They're just literal heretics. They just hang out with heretics. They don't even pay any attention. to, And they're, they're saying, like, oh, how David Benjamin's followers don't use critical thinking and stuff. You guys can't think through what Jack Smack just said? You can't realize what that is? You don't understand that? If you don't understand that, who's the one who doesn't use critical thinking, Fuego? You literal clown. Just because you like this guy. That's the only reason. They like this guy. They're fans of this guy. So then they're going to let him just be a heretic. And then they're going to go along with it and tell their viewers, oh, go watch Jack Smack. He's great. And meanwhile, he's literally backloading, literally being a heretic. Even if somebody is already saved and they believe this thing that he's saying, right? That's also bad. Because that means that they now, now they feel like they have to, if they ever like doubt their salvation, that means they're going to doubt their, they're going to doubt, they're going to continue, like, the very fact that they doubted their salvation to them will indicate that they're an unsaved. That's what that means. Okay, if they start to come to this belief, like maybe what if I what if I can lose my salvation, you know? And then according to what he just said, that means they're unsafe. So then they're gonna li literally doubt their salvation. So I don't know, you guys are just wrong. Some false witness and they make God a liar because these people are nothing but unsaved liars themselves. So that's all uh, you're you're probably an unsaved liar. I mean if this if if Jack Smith always believed this, what he just said, he's unsaved. I don't know. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he at one point he believed the truth, but now he's preaching this. So we don't know. Um, the fact is, if Jack Smack has always believed what he just said just now, just I just played it for you, then that means he's unsafe. Okay? He's going to hell, or he's on his way there. Okay. If he's always believed what he just said, then he's on his way to hell. Okay, Jack Smack, you literal clown, literal clown. Anyway, so, yeah, and he says that they're nothing but unsaved liars. And all this stuff. So, these guys are clowns. Anyway. It's just fake exposing itself. And it's sad. I'd say, man, he, uh, he just went off the deep end. No, you, you guys are fake exposing yourself, okay? Because, once again, I'm just pointing out your errors, okay? If you guys stop making errors, then I'll stop pointing them out. But you continue to make them. I told Jack Smack about that video. I, I made a video about that video. I just showed it about Jack Smack. I, I tagged him on it. He knows about it. And it's been months, and he hasn't done anything. He's still got that video up on his channel. 10,000 people are... are, are um, Subscribe to this guy. That means thousands of people are being exposed to this false doctrine, this heresy. And you're like, oh, well, whatever. Oh, Sampat doesn't recognize real, man. Mike doesn't recognize real. He's, he's a fake. He's a fake because he doesn't recognize us. Whatever, man. You guys are rolling with literal heretics. And then this guy, your friendly hood, is another heretic. I mean, not your friendly hood. Staying ABS is another heretic. Look, look what... Oh, yeah, he starts talking about these Pharisees. He has a video that he came out with today. It's about the modern Pharisees or something. So he's like, but I'm just saying, 
I don't know. I wanted to show. I was going to show you that because I was like, you guys are just like them. You're just exactly like them. You're saying to 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 Joe Kirby, Paul Washer, Bruce Lee, and John MacArthur. Because these guys don't preach uh, you need you need works to be saved. They preach that if you don't have works after you're saved, that means you're not really saved. That's like the backloading thing. That's what these these people do, right? But Jack Smack, I just showed you how Jack Smack backloads. So you're criticizing these people. You're rolling with Jack Smack. So you're a you're a complete hypocrite. Okay, you are a complete hypocrite, Fuego. Okay. But anyway, like I do like Fuego, you know. But he's being wicked. He might be a show though. I don't know. It's weird because like, you know what happened? He he like after we got in a fight, then then he started posting some stuff. Like, or I posted some stuff about how he's like, he's like showing these Freemason stuff in his um in his videos. It's weird, you know. Let me let me show you that. That is weird. Eighteen to eighteen. So I did some stuff about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look what this guy does. He goes, he goes to me. Hey, if you ask talk with, to, to ask uh, to have a talk with him privately, would you be down? When? He said in five minutes. Uh, and just give me your word you won't record the phone call. He wants to have a talk with you, brother to brother. But then these guys literally recorded the phone call. That's the kind of snake this guy Fuego is, okay? But anyways, Pacific cannot read. It's me and this guy. So this is one I did. I was like, this guy looks just like this alien. Look at this. Why does he have this thing here? It looks like an eyeball. It looks like a third eye thing. He looks exactly like this, like this alien. But anyway, maybe that's not that convincing but this one this one to me is like i don't know if you don't understand this you're retarded so yeah he posts this this is what he puts on his on his t-shirt do angels have wings in the bible dude i mean michael certainly does not i mean he's never described as having wings why would we suspect that michael has wings why would we do that because you believe in Catholic nonsense, okay? This is just Catholic garbage, this idea that Michael has wings. Because you don't know the difference. And then look what he does here. This is, this is, to me, this is like, look, it's like the one, it's like the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, as above, so below. As above, so below. They point one hand up and one hand down. And he's got, the, and it's like the, with the shadow and everything, it's like this whole duality thing here going on. I'm sorry, this is clearly Freemason symbolism. Clearly, clearly. Why would you do, why would you have one hand up, one hand down? What are you doing? And then, and then after this, after, after I made that, right, then he goes and makes a video on his channel about like, <laughs> it's so bad. Like, look, man. This is why. This is why I just. Still, I still can't. I, I don't know if this guy's a shill or not. I really don't know. It's kind of hard to, for me to believe. This guy. After I made that that post, right? Because I was mad at him. He made this song. Thirty-three percent. Thirty-three. Okay, that's obviously Freemason. Okay, as within, so without. Now, this is the thing. Now, most. Occultists know about as above, so below. The as within, so without thing, that's kind of like a new thing. So that's like, I mean, I know this guy read read some occult stuff, but look at all this occultic stuff he has on it. And he's trying to say, oh, I just did it because Mike was accusing me of being a... Um, he's, trying to, he's trying to say, oh, Mike was accusing me of being a Freemason, so that's why I did it to... Uh, to make him look bad or something like that. But look, it's like mighty <laughs> with that warrior spirit on the beat. Yeah. With the mantle of Tupac in these streets, but I'm free grace and I'm coming for the blood. Tupac. You know Tupac. Like don't we do we understand like, if we understand that there's a Freemasonic conspiracy to control the music industry and stuff. We understand that Tupac is part of that.
right? Like everyone, everyone who understands about the Illuminati understands Tupac is part of that. So why would you big up Tupac? Why are you doing that? So this is why I think this guy might be a show. He has a phoenix. Why is there a phoenix here? Like everything, everything on this thing is a Freemasonic symbol. Thirty-three. This thing with the duality thing. This thing as above, so below. The song is called "As Within, So Without," which is once again, it's like a, it's like a play on the "As Above, So Below" thing that these guys start doing recently. And come dentro, come glory. I don't know what that means, but it's probably something like related to that. As above, so below, or something like that. No, there's no salvation without blood. No. Yeah, well, I'm coming on the beat, spitting real hard. AK-47 rounds chambered up. Bro, Kirby, you a cuck. Feminist soy. These guns I got ain't toys. Yeah, I'm pulling on the block and I'm praising the Lord. Every single day, I'm cutting you down with the sword. Cause I know you wank and I see it in your eyes. Yeah, you said you stopped, but that's a devil in disguise. Yeah. I know you're telling lies. Coming on the freestyle beat when I'm coming in disguise. No. You can't see my eyes like Stevie Wonder coming with the power and I'm coming with the thunder. Yo. Jack Sparrow said savvy, that's why I did plunder. I came from crime from the land down under. Yeah. Got the guns, this is not just for fun. They know I'm out for blood. Call me Fuego the Hun. Yeah. I hunt false yeah, prophets in the so dumb. But look, this is just weird. Like, I don't know why how, why would this look if somebody accused me of being a Freemason show, right? I would not make this song. 30, I would not do this. This is just weird. Nobody does this, but they would do it if they were a shill, because it's like this thing of the revelation of the method. It's like they have to like tell you, and then and then if you still go along with them, then it's your own fault kind of thing. Yeah. You know what he was doing too in this in this video? He was doing some weird stuff with his hands too. Yeah? Let me just try to find. See, look what he, look what he does with his hands, bro. Look 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 what he's doing here. Look, look Opinion. At Trumping or superseding. Is it um, here? Oh, look, 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 what he's doing. look what he's doing with his hands. Look what he's doing with his hands. Why, why do you do this with your hands, bro? What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're trying to show off this triangle thing? What are you doing, dude? This is a hand sign. That's a hand sign, bro. That's so, I think Fuego's probably a shell or something. Or maybe it's possible that he's just so in his flesh, like rolling with these heretics like Jack Smack and just being a flesh person and just being in his flesh, that it's causing him to, like, manifest as a shill. I don't know. Maybe that's what's happening. But he, this this is a hand sign. This is clearly a hand sign. He does this a lot in this video. It's very weird. Like, why would you do that? And then, and then making this song is very Freemasonic and weird. I'm sorry. So, I don't know, man. I would say this verse is probably a shill. Now, I want to look at your Friendly Hoods channel. This guy's another weirdo. What's poppin', people? Welcome back to your Friendly Hood. Dude, I'm freezing cold out here, man. You guys don't understand. I'm just freezing to death out here for you. All for you. And I don't get anything. I don't get anything. Uh, everybody, everybody you guys don't even friends. like my video. Everybody just tells me to, to look While at most this. Christians hate this, the fact is that the Bible teaches that faith without works saves i'm not just making this up i'm literally quoting the bible open up to romans chapter 4 verse 5 it says to him that works not but believes on him that justifies the ungodly his faith is counted as righteousness what paul is saying right there is that we can be a sinful person an unrighteous person in our flesh and live an unrighteous lifestyle but if we will put our faith in jesus christ and trust that he is able to grant us remission of sins able to forgive us that god will count us as being a good person count us as though we're not a sinner even though we are one and how does this work as it says in romans chapter three Jesus was punished on the cross for our sins and he spilled his blood so that we could be forgiven and in Romans chapter 5 it says we are rewarded for Jesus's good works the same way how we are punished for Adam's sin we all die because of what Adam did but we can all have eternal life because of what Jesus did if we will put our faith in him and I push this continue so so I'm like I'm like glad that these guys are pushing the uh, somewhat correct gospel message but like 
the problem with them is that they that they're just reckless in the way they teach stuff. So they'll like literally point tell people that Jazz Max is okay, CNA AVS is okay. CNA AVS is another one clearly backloading, clearly okay, clearly clearly backloading. Okay, it's quite impossible to deny. I already showed you in my video. CNA. Number one, love. James chapter two says faith without works is dead. And Jesus says in the gospel of John that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. See, when you believe something, what naturally occurs is that your belief will influence your outer act. So you see what he's saying now? If you believe something, then what naturally occurs is that your belief will influence your outer actions. So this is again backloading, okay? And you might say, oh no, he was saying that he was saying that um it's not talking about initial faith when you get saved, he's just talking about as you continue to believe, it will influence your actions. Well, no, you don't need just the fact that you believe something doesn't mean it's gonna influence your actions. You have to actually decide to do things. Based on your beliefs. And in the case of Christianity, believing in Jesus and growing in faith in what he did on the cross will lead you to want to stop sinning. How does this So you see that? Believing in Jesus and what he did on the cross, growing in faith will lead you to stop sinning. In what he did on the cross will lead you to Jesus and growing in outer actions. And in the case of Christianity, believing in Jesus and growing in faith in what he did on the cross will lead you to want to stop sinning. How growing in faith. Growing in faith, I think I think he's I mean, he might be trying to say that like by growing in faith you're going to overcome sin or, or something. And like it is true we're supposed to grow in the faith and growing in the faith is very good. But the idea that just because you believe this thing, that therefore you're going to stop sinning or what have you, is backwards again. Okay, so this is heresy. Once How does this happen? Listen, when you really think about what Jesus did for us, that he sacrificed himself and took the punishment that we deserve, that he stepped down from heaven, became a human being. When you realize that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us, you begin to understand that God loves us. And as yeah, so what if we realize all that and then we don't care and we don't stop sinning? Does that mean we're unsaved? Because that's what you seem to be saying. It says in the book 1 John, we love God because God first loved us. When you really understand what Jesus did, you can't help but love him. And the more that you... See, see? Well, when you really understand what Jesus did, you can't help. You can't help but, but love him. That's backloading your friendly hood, you absolute clown. This is two months ago, man. So don't you know what backloading is yet or not? Grow in understanding and meditate on the things that Jesus did for us. It's just impossible to not love him. And so because we love Jesus, we are going to be moved to obey him because we want to make him proud and we want to do the things that he commanded us because he loved us so much. And so because we love Jesus, we are going to be moved to obey him because we want to make him proud. So what if we don't love Jesus? What then? Does everybody who's saved love Jesus? Is that what you're trying to say? That everyone who's saved loves Jesus? Is that what you're saying? And we want to do the things that he commanded us because he loved us so much to die for us. And why wouldn't we do the little bit that he asks us to do? But the fact is that this isn't a 100% guarantee that you're not going to sin. Just because. Yeah, we understand that, obviously. Obviously. But your point is what you were saying is that if you if you if you um love Jesus or whatever, if you believe this thing, you would just naturally stop sins. And if you stop sinning. Number one, love. James chapter 2 says, faith without works is dead. And Jesus says in the gospel of John that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. See, when you believe something. No, he doesn't say, he doesn't say, if you love me, you will keep my he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's commanding them to keep his commandments, okay? So once again, you should not misquote the Bible that way. Be careful when you quote the Bible. Don't say stupid things like that. Because what you just said is not true. 
What naturally occurs is that your belief will influence your outer actions. And you will keep my commandments. See, when you believe something, what naturally occurs is that your belief will influence your outer actions. And it yeah, that's back glory. That's clearly back glory. Okay, once again. I mean, the fact you guys don't understand this, this is why I'm telling you, you guys are unlearned, unstable, false teachers, okay? You don't know what you're saying. You're not careful about what you say. You're reckless. You're reckless, false teachers, okay? You should literally delete your channel. That's how bad this is. That's how bad this is. That's how wicked this is. You're wicked. Percent guarantee that you're not going to sin. Just because you have a belief that doing something is wrong doesn't mean that you are always going to be a perfect person that never violates your own. Yeah, we understand you're not going to be perfect. But what you seem to be suggesting here is that you will be somewhat like not sinning or some, if you believe, then you're going to, like, it's going to influence your actions and stuff. It's backloading, bro. It's clearly backloading your wicked conscience. Unfortunately, most people have been a hypocrite once in their life. And Christians are more so hypocrites than any person because we believe that all sins are evil and yet everyone sins. The fact is, while we do have these beliefs and we have this love for God, we also have the conditioning of society and the conditioning of our childhoods and just the lusts of the flesh that are naturally with us that want to drive us in the other direction. And they're always going to be with us. The second reason why someone who believes in free... Anyway, anyway, whatever, man. What's popping, people? What? Now, he had one about, I can't remember what it was. My friend told me about this one. Oh, this one. Look, look at this one. Seven months, seven months ago, okay? So, whatever. He goes, stop being fat. Look at, look at this, stop being fat. I don't, I don't know. I mean, he's not exactly thin. What's popping, people? Welcome back to Sunday School. Sunday School is a show where we read through the Bible and we try to understand what God's word means. Okay, so what this person is trying to say in this video is that Jesus is that we're all married to Jesus. And how we can apply it to our lives. We've been reading through the book of Romans and today we're going to be getting into Romans chapter 7. And Romans chapter 7 teaches one of the most bizarre one of the strangest doctrines that there is in christianity marriage to christ i know that there are some christian denominations which have a teaching a concept similar to marriage of christ they call it marriage to christ like for example the catholic church has nuns right and these nuns are women who have dedicated their lives to the church they're not going to get married and many people say that they're married to christ they're married to god but this is not what we're talking about in romans chapter 7. romans chapter 7 is going to teach as we see that the average believer the average christian male or female is married to jesus no, it's not what it teaches at all, at all, by any means, okay? Um, when he says that, he says that ye should be married to another, ye being the plural. That he, he says that ye should be married to another, even to him that was raised from the dead. Ye is plural. So he's talking to the church. The church as a group is married to Christ, not individual Christians. That's gay, okay? That is completely gay. You should never teach this, okay? Because why would we be, why would I, I'm a man. Why would I be married to Christ? That's ridiculous. And also, that's not what it says. The church is married to Christ, not individual Christians. You absolute clown. And I know that might sound very, very strange and very bizarre, but the fact is that is what we're going to see here today. So before. No, it isn't. It's not what you're going to see. Before we get into the text, I just want to recap how we got here and kind of summarize the last two chapters because there's a lot of information that has been contained in the last two chapters that are very important. And we got to look at all of these contextually 
because they all play into how we're getting to chapter 7. So in chapters 3 and 4, we really establish that salvation is through faith alone in Christ alone. That Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for us and that if we believe in him and we trust in him, we will go to heaven. In Romans chapter 5, Paul starts to get into how it is, what by what mechanisms are we getting rewarded for what Jesus did? You know, why is it that something Jesus did 2,000 years ago makes us go to heaven 2,000 years later, right? And Paul talks about how it's similar to original sin, to Adam and Eve, and how Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and because of that, they were punished with death and since we etc etc but paul gets into the laws pertaining to marriage and so i want to get into what the bible teaches about marriage because it's going to be pertinent to understanding this passage so if we go to genesis chapter 2 we get the story of adam and eve and genesis 1 2 and 3 that's the story of adam and eve the <laughs> creation yeah. myth that look, these guys look they don't know what they're talking about but they talk this is what happens this is what happens. People don't know, but they like to talk. And so they're just going to talk all this stuff at you. It's not based on knowledge. It's just based on their, on their misinformation, their lack of knowledge. Let's just see what he says about Paul's point about marriage. Marry someone else. And this is the law. So what Paul's making the case here for, what he's saying is he's saying the law is over all people. And the law has certain teachings on marriage and God is going to hold us accountable to follow these teachings on marriage. If we break his commandments having to do with marriage, if we commit, adul if we commit adultery, if we fornicate or whatever, we cheat on our husband or wife, or if as a man you get married to another man or as a woman you try to get with another woman, these things are going to land you in hell. Is this understood? Because many people get very confused whoa, whoa, as whoa, a man, whoa, whoa. you fornicate or whatever. We cheat on our husband or wife. Or if as a man, you get married to another man or as a woman, you try to get with another woman. These things are going to land you in hell. Is this So you see what you just said? See what you just said? He just said if you cheat on your husband or, or wife, these things are going to land you in hell. So I guess he wasn't free grace back then, seven months ago. But he left this video up. Because he's just reckless. Like I say, reckless, irresponsible, wicked, false teachers. Understood, because many people get very confused here. They think that the man is the law and the woman is us. That's not what's happening here. The law is over the man and the woman. The man and the woman are both bound together as one flesh under the Ten Commandments, under the law. And until one of them dies... They cannot leave each other. They have to stay faithful till death do us part. So then, if while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she will be called an adulteress. So if she cheats on her husband, that's adultery, right? Even if she gets married to another man, if she's still married to her original husband, that is adultery. That is cheating. That's worthy of death. That's worthy of hell. But... Worthy of hell, worthy of hell. Once again, he's saying this. Okay? He's saying that if you cheat on your husband, you're going to hell. But if her husband be dead, she's free from the law so that she is no adulteress. If her husband is dead, then she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress. You know, you know why this doesn't add up? Because like, we're, like as he goes on in this, in this thing, Paul, right? he says that we are the ones that die. Like in this thing, the, the husband dies, so the wife is free. But when, when Paul talks about us, we're the ones that die. And so now we're free. But it's not, it's not like some close analogy where, okay, oh, that means we're married to Christ now. It's not like that. It's not like that, man. It's a metaphor. He's using a metaphor, okay? You understand? Though she be married to another man. It is very simple here, but this really confuses a bunch of people. I have no clue why. But what you're confused. You're the one that's confused. You don't you think we're married to Christ. Individual Christians are married to Christ. You're the one that's confused, you literal clown. Anyway. This is saying is that 
if you are married to someone and you cheat on them, you have committed a sin. But if you're married to someone and the person you are married to dies, you are no longer breaking the law. You are no longer sinning by cheating on them. It's not cheating because that person is dead. So if they are alive, it's cheating. It's a, it's a sin. It is breaking the law. But if they're dead, it's no longer a sin and it's no longer breaking the law. The law did not die. The husband died. The woman did not die. The husband died. It's still a sin to cheat on your husband. But if your husband does not exist anymore, then you don't have a marriage. So therefore, you're no longer under the law of marriage. So he talks about all this stuff to do with marriage because he's going to get into how we get saved by Christ. And we get saved by Christ through marriage. But it's a different kind of marriage. Wherefore, my brethren, you are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So once again, yeah. So we are the ones who died, all right? In the, in the, uh, in the metaphor that Paul was making, the, the husband dies, so the woman is free to get married, right? And now in this one, we're the ones who die. We die. And now we can marry, we can be married to another. But it's not individually we have to get married to Christ. It's like ye, that ye should be married to another, the church, the church. Ye also, ye, the church, also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. So now we're getting into one of the strangest concepts in the Bible, like I said in the intro, marriage to Jesus. As a Christian, Look at you, this guy. Look at this guy. He's talking like he knows the Bible, like he's like an expert on the Bible. Like he's literally, he's like, he's not only like saying, "Hey guys, look at what it says here. Isn't that interesting?" Like, I wonder if this means we're we're married to Jesus. Is that what it means? No, he's telling them, "No, this is one of the most." Like he's talking like he knows the Bible back and forth, and he studied it for years, and he's like, "Yo, no, you're married to Jesus now, you guys." You marriage to Jesus. As a Christian. You are married to Jesus Christ. Now, it's not like a literal marriage where like you're going to have sex with them. And it's not even a marriage where you have to stay committed to them and like you can't, ha you can't get married, right? It's not that kind of marriage. It's, a di it's not any kind of, it's not nothing like that. It's just a metaphor. He's just making a metaphor. If you keep reading on. Anyway, let me just show you this. Wow, dude. Wow, this is so wicked. This person is just ignorant. Like he doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's talking like he knows exactly what he's saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like one of the strangest concepts in the Bible, guys. You're married to Christ. Anyway, let me just, we don't need to agree. So, okay, let's go. What is this? No, you're not brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, that have a law of the liveth as long as he liveth so now the law does not have dominion over us because we are dead okay for the woman which has a husband is bound to, by the law to her husband as long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she is loose from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth she be married to another man she should be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another Wherefore, my brethren, ye, the group, ye is plural. Okay, when you say ye, it's not like one. It's it's you as a group, church, 
are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. So they are the ones that died. Not the, not like with the woman, she, her husband died, now she's free. We are the one that died, and now we're free to marry another. We as a group become married to Christ. Okay? And you can see like this this kind of metaphor happens in other places in the um in the New Testament, for example, um I think it's Ephesians. Okay, look look what it says here. Well, I submit yourselves unto your own husbands is unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Christ is that's why we're the the, the church is the church as a whole, the whole church is like the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ, okay? And I think it's in um, uh, Revelation 19, I think. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, hath made herself ready. Who's his wife? Are you his wife, your friendly hood? You literal clown? And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the right, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So she, being the church, is going to be arrayed in white because the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Yeah, so this is just dumb, man. This guy doesn't understand what he's talking about. This is embarrassing. And also, just don't don't forget, he said that if you if you cheat on your husband, that's a sin worthy of hell. Like he like he like I guess he wasn't free grace back then or something. I don't know. But take this video that you in different kind of marriage, but it works in the same way that you become one flesh with this person. So just to make it clear before we get any further into this, you become one flesh with who? But it works in the same way that you become one flesh with one flesh with Jesus. So we individually become one flesh with Jesus. Is that what you're saying? Let's hear this. this person. So just to make it clear before we get any further into this, as a Christian, it is not a sin for you to get married to a woman or to a man and to have sex with that woman and man and produce children. That is not a sin. And it is a marriage. But we are also married in a different way, not in the same way that we're married to our wife. We are married to Jesus. No, we're not. No, we're not. We are not married to Jesus. Okay? There is no marriage to Jesus for the individual Christian. Even the church thing, when, when Paul says the church is married to Jesus, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor, okay? We're not lit the church is not literally married to Jesus. Clearly, clearly, okay? You literal clown. So how does that work? Well, let's get into human anatomy. So the Bible has its own version of human anatomy. Now we're not talking about like all the organs and the heart and the brain. It's not that kind of anatomy, but the spiritual anatomy. So as it says in Galatians chapter five, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit lusts against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that you would. See the human being is made up of two parts, the flesh, and the spirit. The flesh is literally your physical body. This arm here, my torso, my head, my hands, my, my legs, my feet, that's my flesh. Now, if you read any other Bible translations, the- Your mind is also part of your flesh, by the way. In this kind of breakdown of the human anthropology, the mind is also part of the flesh. The only thing that's the spirit is your, Spirit, your newborn 
inborn spirit, which is completely perfect and sinless. No. So your mind is sin, your mind sins, and your flesh and your body sins. So the flesh is your body, your physical body, and your mind. Okay, both. If you read any other Bible translations, the Bible will translate this word flesh that is used throughout all of Paul's epistles, not as flesh, but as sinful nature. And that is a total mistranslation. Bible translations flesh. Now, if you read any other Bible translations, the Bible will translate this word flesh that is used throughout all of Paul's epistles, not as flesh, but as sinful nature. And that is a total mistranslation. When the Bible uses the word flesh in the Greek, it's using the word sarx, and the word sarx is the same word that's used when Jesus eats meat. Sarx, he's eating flesh. If you eat a steak, you are eating flesh. And just like how a cow can be chopped up into pieces of flesh like steak, like a ribeye, like a New York strip, the human body can be cut up into pieces, right? But of course, we're not going to get into all that. But the point is, we well, have what flesh. Is trying, what is this guy trying to say? He's trying to say that the word sarx always means, it always means like, <laughs> like literal human flesh. Is that what he's trying to say? I don't, I don't know. That's weird. Let's see what he says. Flesh, blood, and bone. And we have our organs and all that too, right? That is our flesh. But the human also has another part. We have a spirit, right? We have a soul and the soul animates us. So we are flesh and we are spirit. Now, if you continue reading in Galatians so, chapter 5, it, it talks man. about like, how like, so, the flesh... Look, look, look. The spirit and the soul are different, okay? Um, the soul usually refers to, like, your physical life, often in the Bible, but it often, often also refers to, like... Or, I mean, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter, like, uh, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse, like, 23, I think, it talks about how we have a spirit, soul, and body, okay? Spirit, soul, and body. So that's why a lot of people will say that the human is made up of the spirit, soul, and body. And so what they say then is the spirit part is your, is your spirit, which is first it's just a sinful spirit, but then it can be reborn. If you're born again, now your spirit is perfect and sinless. But you still have your soul and your body. So in that way of thinking about it, spirit, soul, body, the tripartite uh, human anthropology, when, when people talk about that, right, they'll say, they'll say the, um, the soul part, the spirit is reborn, it's perfect, sinless if you're born again, right? The soul part is like your mind, your emotions, and that stuff, and then your flesh, or the body is your physical body. That's what that's what they would say about that. First Thessalonians five twenty three, uh, the spirit, soul, and body. So based on that, some people, most people actually in Christianity, or most Protestants will say that there's a tripartite human uh, anthropology. Okay, human nature is, is three parts: spirit, soul, and body. But this guy's saying soul and spirit are the same thing because he doesn't know about that. So we are flesh and we are spirit. Now, if you continue reading in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about how the flesh has lust. From the flesh is where we get the lust to eat, the lust to have sex, the lust for power, the lust for laziness and not working. None of these things are evil. These are just the natural functions of the human body. You have the lust to eat so you don't starve to death. You have the lust to have sex so that you can have sex with your wife who you love and reproduce. You have the lust for power so that you have protection. You have the lust for this and the lust for that. It's natural. That's just the human body. And the spirit, it lusts after these greater Things. So the spirit lusts after making high art. The spirit lusts after doing the right thing. The spirit lusts after... All this stuff is just like from his head. Does the, does the Bible say the spirit lusts after these things? Maybe it does. Spirit lusts... Let me see. Lust. Uh, 
So let's bless the blessings of us as spirits. Look at look at James. Look at James four five. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain that the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? So once again, this person is just, just talking a bunch of foolishness. He doesn't even know what he's saying. He doesn't know what he's talking about, right? He's just saying stuff he thinks he knows, so he's just saying stuff. You know? After helping others. So we have this more base part of ourself. One could say it's the animalistic half of ourself. And then we have the higher spiritual part of ourself, the intellectual part of ourself that wants to do great things, make great art, help others, do the right thing. And these two parts of us make up our body. So a human body, our human body, it's one thing. It's not two different things. It is one thing made up of two different members. It's just like marriage. <clears throat> a marriage, right? A little baby that gets produced from a man and a woman having sex, that baby is made up of two different people's DNA. It's two different people fused together into one child. That child isn't two different people though. He's one person, but his parts are two different things. Does that make sense? So as a person, there's no separation between your flesh and your spirit. They are one thing that make up you. The spirit is what animates the flesh. Now, once again, he's just like making up stuff. The spirit, the newborn Holy Spirit in, in us is not just the same as the flesh, the same thing. Because that's why Paul says that, you know, this the sin lust the sin dwells in my members, but his but his spirit, but his inner man like uh jo rejoices in the or like rejoices in the law or something, you know? Romans seven twenty one. The flesh is what gives the spirit the ability to interact with the physical world. You guys grasping this? We are bound to our flesh. What? And wait, wait, what? The flesh is what gives the spirit the ability to interact with the physical world. The flesh? So what he's trying to say now, so once again, he doesn't understand it, right? He's trying to say that the spirit, our spirit, which is the born again spirit, right? We're born again, right? So our spirit is born again. And our spirit is animating our flesh. This is what he's saying, right? Uh, and it's animating our flesh and controlling our flesh and controlling our body. That's what he's trying to say right now. Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know one thing. Okay? This is so embarrassing. You guys grasping this? We are bound. Oh, are you guys grasping are you guys grasping this? My 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 uh my low info viewers. Interact with the physical world. You guys grasping this? We are bound to our flesh. And the flesh is bound to our spirit as long as we live. So long as I am alive, my flesh and my spirit are one. But when we die, our flesh and our spirit get separated. And so if our flesh and our spirit is to be separated, our marriage to it is annulled. Now the flesh our physical body is the part of us that wants to sin, but now you see what he's saying. Our physical body is the thing that wants to sin, not not our mind, not our like our emotions. It's the part of us that wants to sin, but what the Bible teaches is that our flesh, in the eyes of God, has died. It has been annulled. This marriage from my body to my spirit, the spirit is the higher part of me, the flesh is the baser part. But that's not what that's not what Romans 7 is even talking about. He's just saying that because you're dead to the law, once again, this is a metaphor. You're dead to the law, so you're no longer under the law. The law. It's not talking about what he's saying. He's trying to say like the flesh and the and the body, the spirit and the body are married, but now it's annulled and all of a sudden, what the hell are you talking about? 
weird, weird part of me. This marriage has been annulled and my spirit is divorced from my body and my spirit has been remarried to Jesus. No, no, it's not what it says. That's not what that says. That's not what anything in the Bible says. Nowhere does the Bible say that your spirit is married to Jesus. It never says that, never once, okay? You're ridiculous. You don't know what you're talking about. You're talking like you know exactly what you're saying, and you don't. And also, you literally said that if somebody commits adultery, they're going to hell. So uh, you're a wicked false teacher. And we are in the body of Christ. And so when we are judged, we will not be judged by God and be held accountable for what our flesh does in this physical world because the marriage our spirit has to our flesh has been annulled. Instead, we will be judged by what Jesus did because our spirit has been married to his body. Wow. Retarded. Retarded. Literal retardery. This is so dumb. You know, I feel sorry for the people who think this person knows what he's talking about. I mean, if like, but this is your own fault. If you're one of these people who like likes this guy and you think that he knows what he's talking about and you listen to this stuff, it's your own fault for being simple. For How long will you be simple? How long will you be simple? Proverbs chapter 1. So I'm totally out of time. My, ba my camera is about to die. But I hope that this opens up your eyes and gives you a greater understanding of the gospel. Thank you for watching. You can listen to this on Spotify and all the podcasting platforms. Thanks for watching. <laughs> listen to it on Spotify and all the podcasting platforms, guys. Wow, I'm so great. Listen to my stuff. Wow, dude. It's just embarrassing and sad. You know? I don't know what to say. I was going to go into this guy's testimony. This the this? world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. And some things that should not have been forgotten were lost. History became legend. Legend became myth. The evil powers that be forged a new history to teach us. One that has been designed to limit our minds and weaken our spirit. I've crossed oceans of time in search of the truth. The government lied to us. School lied to us. The media lied to us. The system has betrayed us all since birth. Why did school teach us useless and false information? Why did Dr. Anthony Fauci lie to the world? So many questions that needed to be answered. I sat back in the shadows, pondering the ways of the world. In my mind's eye, I saw visions of destruction and doom. To understand the future, we must go back to the past. Many millennia ago, there was a great civilization called Atlantis. It was a giant island. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the thing. So this guy, this is supposed to be his testimony of how Jesus Christ saved him. He's talking about Atlantis, okay? Now, this is another reason why I think this person might be a shell, because, like, I understand. So I guess his story to me about, about his history was that he used to be into the occult, and he was kind of like a gangster, quote-unquote, right? And then he... um. And then he got saved or whatever, right? But then, so, but now he's telling you this occult stuff. Like, look, look, this Atlantis thing, this is literally what the occultists teach, okay? In between North America and Europe. They harness power. Look at this. To look understand this. the future, we must go back to the past. Many wow. millennia ago, there was a great civilization called Atlantis. It was a giant island empire in between North America and Europe. So he's literally saying there was a literal place called Atlantis and, and, and that, that was like some empire. Now, let me just show you. Uh, I was looking at this thing. Let me see. Atlantis. What, what is this? Look, look, look at this. The, the Theosophy. Now, Theosophy, if you guys don't know what that is is some occult wickedness okay these are these people are wicked they're like basically witches okay it started out by this witch elena blavatsky okay and they're wicked they and they run the un and all that stuff so they're like the major illuminati thing is through them the the like luciferian thing is through these people 
be awesome. Too. So, anyway, now look at this. Oh, wait. Anyway. Look what they say about Atlantis. Atlantis was an ancient civilization that lasted four to five million years and existed about a million years before Egypt entered the official history book. It is commonly believed to be a myth, but theosophy tells us different. So, it is commonly believed to be a myth, all right? Now, people, the Bible doesn't say anything about Atlantis, but this person, uh, Fuego Savvy, is saying it. And, and who else says it? The, 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 the theosophist. The continent and islands which compose the lands were centered mainly in what we now know as the Atlantic Ocean. See, see exactly what you just said. The common how the common belief according to Plato was that the island continent disappeared beneath the ocean in one day. Actually, the empire sank in portions in a series of earthquakes that began to hit the North America. So dumb. The Earth is probably like only like six, seven thousand years old. Okay. But look, this is what this person is saying. He's trying to tell you that Atlantis. They harness power and technology that we don't know of today. Atlantis was rich, well-educated, and more advanced than any empire in history at the time. But as time went... Where, where, where is this in the Bible? Is this in the Bible? You're just telling us some occult myth. You're telling your viewers, 2,000, almost 3,000 viewers you have. Now. You're telling them this. You're telling them this is the history of the world. This is the Bible. Does the excuse me? Does the Bible talk about this? Does the Bible say this stuff? Atlantis? It's some pagan myth, man. It's a pagan myth. Okay, you're telling your viewers this. When on, Party. Some began to turn away from the laws of God and nature, lies and propaganda, things that should not be. And also, by the way, the fact that he's got an X symbol, that X symbol is another uh, Illuminati thing that they do. The X thing, he's got an X in front of his body there. That's literally a thing they do the philosopher plato writes about all this in his book called critias which is a rough history of the kingdom of atlantis he called these evil doers the sons of belial they made war against the truth and the ways of righteousness eventually this caused a catastrophe so tremendous that it destroyed atlantis forever and sank it into the waters of the ocean that is why the Atlantic Ocean is the most murky body of water to this day. Once again, just just telling your viewers some superstitious garbage that's believed by occultists. That's what you're doing right now, okay? Are you trying to tell me you're a responsible teacher of the Bible? I mean, I know you might say, oh, I'm not a teacher of the Bible, Mike. Well, you do teach the Bible. You do. You do all the time, okay? So... If you guys were just like just literally just telling the gospel and getting people saved, that would be good. But that's not what you're doing. You're literally te teaching them heresies and other stuff. When I was a child, I always felt something was off about the world. My elementary school principal, Maureen, hated me with a passion. Throughout the years, I caused trouble far more than any person I've ever known. I was raised in the Lutheran church, but I always felt like it was a fake disgrace. I felt like the people there didn't even believe what they were saying. And instead of teaching us God's word, they would do arts and crafts in Sunday school. This turned me away from Jesus Christ. For many years, I became an atheist at a young age. When I got to ninth grade, I rebelled to new extremes. By this time, I realized school was a 100% scam. They were trying to teach me things I didn't need to know, but I cannot place the blame on my teachers. They were slaves to the government. I watched every gangster movie, show, and documentary I could find, and I desired to become the ultimate gangster. Rap music had a deep, evil influence on my life, and it influenced me to live a life of crime. I had dreams of taking over the rap game, and I set up a studio in my room to record my songs. The picture you're looking at is the cover art of one of my mixtapes, taken in front of the county jail. The raps that I made only made the school and local parents more furious. In my town, I developed a reputation as a serious criminal. My rebellion was misplaced. My thoughts were clouded. I didn't yet realize who my true enemy was. 
In my time in high school, I was suspended many times. They tried to ban me at all costs. I was a menace to the school. When I was 16, I had been dealing drugs for a year. I was supplying other dealers, and one of them got caught with a ton of drugs in the school. He gave up my name to the police when they arrived, and the school security guards came to get me from my class. As I was walking with them down to the principal's office, I bolted out the door and ran into the woods. As I looked back at the school, I saw numerous police cars, and there was even a helicopter circling the area. I dumped all of the evidence I had on me in a stream, and I crossed the stream barefoot to run from the police. They had no evidence that I was responsible for the drug dealing, but the school still expelled me. I had to hire a lawyer to force them to let me back in. Finally, when I came back, after a five-month suspension, I was dressed in a full gangster outfit. I was dressed in an Easy Money bucket hat, 1017 Brick Squad shirt, bandanas hanging out of my pockets, loke sunglasses, jewelry, and fake face tattoos. I don't believe this guy is, is tough or a gangster. Like, he's just one of these, like, suburban white dudes, you know? Who's dealing. Okay, so, like, there's a million guys like you, like, and most of them are harder than you. But whatever. I flexed on my principal and the administration. The faculty was enraged at my antics, but there were some who understood and tried to help me. I would leave in the middle of class and go to the woods. The forest was my sanctuary. I felt at peace there. I remember telling my teachers, I won't be in class today. I'm going to a family smoke-out barbecue in the woods. I couldn't sit in a class that was designed to brainwash the youth. I've always enjoyed reading and learning about topics that have value to me, but I refuse to learn the government's propaganda. At the beginning of senior year in September, one of the biggest battles I've ever faced began. I had to fight the government for my life. I was charged with two counts of felony armed robbery because me and my best friend robbed a predator who was in his late 20s, preying on local girls we knew. He was a heroin addict and drug dealer. So we didn't think he would go to the police on us. So I, I guess what, like, I, I've heard this already, right? So what he's trying to say is that he he robbed some guy with a gun or something like that. And then, but he's trying to say it's not that bad, though, because the guy was a predator. And he was like a pedophile or something like that. Like, whatever, dude. Like, you, you're, you're a little criminal. Just admit that you were a criminal. Just admit that it's wrong. It's not good. But instead, he comes back and he's like, I'm a G, I'm a G, I'm a gangster. Look how cool I am. Like, dude, this is embarrassing. You should be ashamed of this. But you're not. You're proud of it. But the girl who encouraged us to rob him was the one who actually convinced him to have us arrested. During this time, I started intensely researching the truth. And I found some disturbing info about the world we live in. I realized who the true enemy is. Back in the time of Atlantis, they were called the Sons of Belial. Today, people call them various things. The elites the powers that be, the cabal. Some call them the Illuminati. I learned who they are and I learned of their ultimate ambitions. World domination through control of the economy, media, religions, schools, governments, and more. Any organization of power, these people have lusted for control over them. They are never satisfied. They always crave more. They have occult knowledge that they use to control the masses. The more I learned, the deeper the rabbit hole became. It was at this time that the devil tried to convince me to sell my soul. He came to me under the name Lucifer and attempted to convince me he was a true God. Oh, oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so now this person is saying that the devil, I'm sorry, I don't, th I don't think I remember this part or something. I don't know if I saw this before. But anyway, he's saying the devil <laughs> literally visited him and offered him to sell his soul. The devil, literally the devil. The Here's deeper the saying. rabbit hole became. It was at this time that the devil tried to convince me to sell my soul. He came to me under the name Lucifer and attempted to convince me he was the true God. This was the darkest time of my life. I was numb to everything and in a deep depression, facing five to 20 years in prison if I was convicted. At the time, I was listening to a YouTuber called The Vigilant Christian. Some of you may remember him from back in the day. He would make conspiracy videos, but he would mention Jesus at times. I became interested in who Jesus Christ is and I started reading the four gospels. When I read the words of Jesus Christ, I knew in my heart that he was the truth 
and I believed in him. He saved me, and I felt joy that I hadn't felt in a long time. I received the true love of God, and it gave me peace and joy for the first time since I was a child. Around the time I started reading the four Gospels, I went to Jamaica and kept reading while I was there. I believed in my heart that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And so did he tell us how he beat his charge? Like, I'm just like, I don't understand how he beat the charge. Yeah. When I returned home, I started spreading the gospel to my friends. God showed great mercy, saving a person as wicked as me. He loves us so much, more than our human minds are capable of even understanding. Psalm 106.1 reads, How did he beat, how did he beat the charge? He was charged with robbing that, that tweaker. So he robs some tweaker, and now he's trying to say that he, he's saying that he got charged with like armed I robbery. I in who Jesus Christ is. Armed robbery and five These people have years lusted for control over them. I was arrested. During this time, I started intensely researching the Japanese, preying on local girls we knew. He was a heroin addict. I was charged with two counts of felony armed propaganda. At the beginning of senior year in September, one of the biggest battles I've ever faced began. I had to fight the government for my life. I was charged with two counts of felony armed robbery because me and my best friend robbed a predator who was in his late 20s, preying on... Okay, so he's charged with felony armed robbery, two counts, because they robbed a predator, supposedly, who was, like, supposedly, uh, like, preying on little girls or something so that's how he's he's trying to act like oh that thing i did where i where i like pulled a gun out on somebody and took their money right that that's not that bad because the guy was a predator uh and then what he's trying to say is but what i don't understand here and he's not trying to say that oh i did something wrong and i shouldn't have done it he's not saying that he's like i got into the biggest fight of my life He's not saying, wow, I, that, that was so wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have never done none of that stuff. I was so wicked. I was so ashamed of it. He's not saying that. And then the other thing is that I don't understand how he beat this charge. I really don't. Robbery. Because I fight the government for my life. I was charged with two counts of felony armed robbery. Because me and my best friend robbed a predator who was in his late 20s, preying on local girls we knew. He was a heroin addict and drug dealer. So we didn't think he would go to the police on us. But the girl who encouraged us to rob him was the one who actually convinced him to have us arrested. During this time, I started intensely researching the truth, and I found some disturbing info about the world we live in. Anyway, he doesn't talk about how he beat the charge. So. Back in the time, of I think so he much, probably ratted our, somebody out. Or something. Something. How did he beat? How did he beat the charge? How did he beat the charge, Fuego? Did you rat somebody out? It's like I don't understand. If you get charged with this thing, you did it. You clearly did. You're admitting you did it, right? So then, how did you beat? The or is it because of your first offense, or what is it? Even if it's first offense, you pulled a gun out on somebody and took their money, right? So that's uh, armed robbery. That's a serious thing. They're not just going to let you go. They're capable of even understanding. Psalm 106.1 reads, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. May the grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Anyway, yeah, so this guy's probably a rat. I don't really know. But I'll just say it's very weird that he would talk about Atlantis and all this stuff. That's just bizarre, okay? Why, why are you talking about this? It's not in the Bible, okay? So once again, maybe you're not a shill. Maybe you're just, maybe you're just so in your flesh, Fuego, that you do stuff like that. Like you're manifesting as if you're a shill because you're doing, you, you made that 33 song. And you're and you're you're doing that pose up hand like the as above so below pose, and you're and you're like telling people about Atlantis and all this stuff. And you know, if you look at this guy's live streams, it's like one thing after another. It's just like he's just constantly like showing all this stuff about Freemasonry. I mean, I, I haven't seen it for a while actually. I don't know what he's talking about. But back when I used to watch some of his live streams, it was just. Freemasonry again and again and again, on and on and on about it, because he doesn't know enough about the Bible to just talk about that. So he has to talk about that Freemasonry stuff. But it's just bringing people's minds back onto that. You know? Like once in a while, okay, talk about it, but don't just go on and on. But anyway, I think I would say this person, if he's not a shell, he's he's very 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 confused, very. And it's because you're rolling with heretics. 
Danny VS is a heretic. I show you can see my videos on him. Okay, I know they're a bit long. Well, just deal with it, man. I mean, um, or if you want, like, put a comment in here, and I'll and I'll let you know the like timestamps. Okay, and you can see my videos on Danny VS. He's clearly backloaded, clearly. And as sh as I showed you earlier in this video, Jack Spack is also clearly backloading. So if you don't get it, it's your own fault. It's because you're a wicked false teacher yourself okay and if you do get it if you do understand what i just said what i just taught you here about how that's right backloading and how your friendly hood is backloading and cnavs is backloading right if you do understand that then you need to tell those guys to fix up their stuff and and fly right like take down the videos where they're back all they need to do is take down the videos where they're backloading and then they're good just take down all the videos, like examine your videos, think about it. Am I backloading here? And then just take it down. If you, if you are, just take it down. That's all you have to do. And you're good. But as you as you guys are doing right now, you're just heretics, okay? You're literal heretics, and you're gonna face the judgment. I understand you guys are probably saved. I don't know for sure, because right now you're backloading, so maybe you're not saved, I don't know. But if you are saved, then as a brother, I'm telling you, to stop doing what you're doing because there's a judgment for the, for people who try to teach the Bible and don't know what they're talking about, James 3, 1. Okay, so smarten up and stop doing, stop being heretics. Okay, I don't know, whatever. Just like smarten up, you guys. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Toronto Bible Study. Hallelujah.